Only the bravest of the young researchers can dare to come to Arkhangelsk, the northern land of Pomors, to become part of the big team and throw oneself into the issues of the Arctic. Their sole purpose is to witness first land local life and Arctic research. PhD students from 13 countries have come to the Northern Arctic Federal University as participants of the international school Russia in the Arctic Dialogue – Local and Global Context. A PhD school is a special format which is used by universities in many countries, including Russia. We know that some PhD schools deal with the Arctic issues and we have definitely looked into their experience, trying to give ours a personal touch to turn it into an essentially new educational product. The school's compass is headed north. Between April 5 and 11, its participants are to visit a number of organizations that operate in and for the Arctic, including a diamond field, Russian Arctic National Park's office, Emercom Regional Office, as well as the research vessel Professor Molchanov. At the core of the educational agenda is a series of lectures to be delivered by top experts from Russia and abroad. The school aims to raise awareness of Russia's Arctic strategy and major Arctic projects and to foster cross-border cooperation in exploring and discussion of the present-day Arctic challenges. The first two days had students following the lectures, as many as four per day, given insights into geopolitical dimension of the Arctic and the Arctic strategy, Arctic governance and socio-economic development, climatic impacts on human health, Arctic logistics and detailed analysis of shipping along the northern sea route over the last three years. Bjorn Gunnarsson, a major analyst and expert who conducts research on the front lines of marine logistics, received an invitation from the Arctic, the territory of Dialogue Forum, but opted for Arkhangelsk instead of St. Petersburg to contribute to the NARFU PhD school. I, I like to interact with students and uh, I like teaching and sharing uh, knowledge and information and, and um, I, uh, I was uh, assured that the, this uh, uh, PhD course would be very interesting and a lot of ideas. Um, so both to receive information and, and give information to, to young uh, scholars is, uh, is, uh, is uh, something that I'm very uh, interested in doing. And I would want to say that uh, the, the, the quality of the lectures was quite high and uh, it was very informative. So for sure there was something that was for me not so informative like for the others. But in general I was very very surprised and I'm very very happy to, to attend to this PhD school. We have very many classes that start in the morning and finish in the evening, so we study hard. I major in political studies and explore Russian energy policy for the Arctic, which is an interesting field. I think I have a good chance while being here in the Arctic to find a lecturer in energy policy to advise me on my research and give guidance. We wanted the students to see how certain industries work in practice. The visits to various local industries were an important component of the school. In the last three days, lectures were combined with active work in the field. The first destination was the Russian Arctic National Park Office. Military bases were located here on the territory of the park on Grand Joseph Land, and uh, there was a lot of rubbish uh, left. Um, as you see on these pictures, you can see uh, territory, some pictures of some islands on Grand Joseph Land, which were cleaned uh, before the cleaning, and now uh, how we can see them after the cleaning. I was uh, very excited. Uh, when I saw the video about National Park and uh, after, saw the, after I saw the park, park, National Park, I want to do my research about our Arctic in my lifetime. I want to visit the National Park and uh, to, um, the, no, when I visit, when I fi finish my visit, I want to go home and uh, to tell my, all my members of family or all my classmates, oh, it's so excited, it, it was so beautiful, you should to, to, uh, fly to have a look. Scientists from all over the globe are able to see the Arctic firsthand thanks to NARFU's Arctic Floaton University, a project that has been conducting research expeditions to this ice-covered terra incognita for eight years now. 
the PhD school participants have used their chance to see the onboard facilities and to experience, even though only briefly, what it's like to be a marine researcher. Oh. <laughs> The chance of being guided around the floating university and to its heart, the Captain's Bridge, is not enjoyed by many. I would love to. Um, right now my, my study, is what I do at the moment, is quite technical, but I would love to do more like, like this natural like um, researching and uh, take water samples because that's also what I used to do more when I was an uh, environmental scientist. Uh, so yes, and also I would like to just go and take a lot of pictures <laughs> and see the animals and see the landscapes. And, uh, yeah, definitely. I, I hope uh, one day I will have a chance and actually be in this boat and uh, go around. The PhD school participants are free to join this and other NARFU's research projects. The Arctic University welcomes the cooperation opportunities. Alongside lectures, the participants source knowledge from one another's research projects during their defense sessions, which took place every day and featured up-to-date facts and data. All of the presented research projects were very interesting to follow. Presented by experts in different fields, they focused on diverse topics and I think they have proved useful for the audience. We had an expert photographer from Canada with us today who told us about how the Arctic can be pictured and filmed in a different way. One interesting research dealt with literary studies, one with political studies and Greenland, and there was a presentation about Chinese-Russian relations in the Arctic. In Korea, it's a few stu students who study social sciences about Arctic, and I'm studying regional studies of Russia and I started to focus on studying Arctic but in Korea it's really hard to find good material at lectures so this forum is exactly what I wanted, yeah. The Museum of Artistic Exploration of the Arctic was chosen by the organizers to show how painters portrayed indigenous people's life, their household articles and the beauty of living at the edge of the world. Here, NARFU professor Anna Salavyova delivered her lecture about the unique experience of Alexander Borisov, a world-famous Arctic painter. They represent the area where he was from, Krasnoborsky <coughs> district of Arkhangelsk region. It's a shame I have never heard about this artist. He's well known and important. I very much like the art and architecture. I like the building. I find it impressive, like many things here. And I also like how they divided his life into stages. But what I like most is that they have the indigenous community's attitude towards the artist which is ample enough to show the history in its entirety. One of the lasting impressions from these days remains in the trip to Emercom Regional Crisis Center, where the school met the Arctic Rescue Team and had an opportunity to see their gear, facilities and environmental risk management system. How often do you receive emergency calls? All the time. You mean every day? We've responded to three today. Oh, two domestic accidents and one patient transportation from an island. Yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed because um, I've never uh, drove such a, a cushion boat. And uh, yeah, it was totally different from driving a car because uh, when you drive with a car on ice, yeah, you, you feel um, the ground, but here in this case, uh, there was it was like on his first trip to Russia, Markus Pshibil from Bavaria had to be rescued from the deceptive Russian spring. Going on this tour only wearing a shirt was very daring. This jacket is absolutely warm, and uh, I thank thank all here the um, colleagues um, for this warm jacket here. <laughs> And I like this jacket, it's very nice, yeah. And uh, the thing is, when, I, when we came here in, in the, on this area here, um, I first thought, what a nice jacket, I would like to have <laughs> such a jacket like that. Trying on the uniform or taking a ride on an air cushion vehicle alone won't suffice to experience the daily routines of an Arctic rescuer. The PhD students were shown all the technical gear and appliances, including deep water and diving equipment. Even the contents of a rescuer's cold ration were disclosed to them. 
Когда мы были в этот МЧС, I was just surprised because I didn't know how important the job of this rescue team was. And they are such nice and hospitable people, modest, ordinary people doing such an important job. It would be a lie to say I didn't like the small boat trip they had arranged for us. It was awesome. <laughs> the beauty of the Arctic is reflected on the facets of a northern diamond, showing what the eye can barely perceive. The participants of the International PhD School had a chance to go to the Lamanasov diamond field. Neither the long journey nor the strongest wind could spoil their experience. Strict confidentiality and high safety standards are all part of the operational culture at this mining plant. Being a literary researcher, I could barely imagine I'd find myself in a place like this. It impressed me greatly. So many vehicles, huge vehicles and machines. I can't say I've been to many places like this. It's been a very interesting experience, though, and I think I will always remember it. Final cultural destination is the open-air museum of wooden architecture Maui Kareli. Not only does it constitute to the Akongo's brand identity, it serves as a key to interpretation of the history and traditions of northern Russia. In many of the places that we went for the trip, they don't have a lot to do with my research, things like the diamond mine and uh, the historical museum and art. They're things that I don't spend a lot of time on, so I really appreciate being able to go and have those experiences. Um, they end up being really wonderful. I think actually the uh, Akanga's uh, historical museum, open air museum, was probably my favorite. I think seeing the old, I love old buildings. I, I was really impressed and amazed by uh, all of these structures, these giant buildings. Um, I think when they showed the uh, one building and said, this is a middle-class uh, peasant's house. Middle class? <laughs> this is huge! But uh, it's really incredible to learn more. I think learning about any country's history is a really important window to uh, learn about their present. And so I really appreciated having that experience. The school concluded with an opinion exchange session where the students discussed the presidential speeches at the plenary session of the 5th International Arctic Forum. They touched upon Russia's strategy for the Arctic and the prospects of the international cooperation. This round table was dedicated to the plenary session of the Arctic Forum in St. Petersburg. We tried to reflect on what was said there, on the prospects for Russia to continue the development in the Arctic, and on the prospects of the cross-border cooperation. I personally think it is essential that the beginner Arctic researchers should be able to find their way and acquire the vision of the Arctic in the current political setting, which is prone to changes. Somebody came up with an interesting idea that researchers should go beyond the confines of their offices and speak to communities and politicians in the language which is going to promote the Arctic science and make it an important, interesting and understandable field of the knowledge. Upon completion of the course, the participants were issued certificates. Much more important, however, is the unique experience and knowledge that they gained during the International PhD School. I think that this PhD School has been really insightful in many ways because it brings together people from all over the world. And we talk about one specific theme, which is our, the Russian view of the Arctic and we discuss it in many different ways. So I've learned very much from all of the different participants. Overall, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from lectures. In my institute, we explore a whole series of Arctic issues, and my focus is exactly the Arctic, its investment potential, international cooperation prospects, and how certain industries can benefit from it. A big thank you to the organizers. This has been a high-quality conference with a diverse array of lectures, each of which has proved useful for me personally and for my future research. Actually, I've learned a lot because I come from France and France is not an Arctic country. So I was really wishing to have like Russian inputs because Russia is the biggest Arctic power and I 
lack this this um, this knowledge in France actually. So I was very very happy to have uh, Russian inputs about the Russian in the Arctic because I don't have such an expertise in France back. So. Thank you very much. It's my first time in Akangas region and the city of Akangas. I'm new to many things here. I like this place and the school, how it was organized and the lectures, which all turned to be very useful. Yes, extremely useful and I'm uh, sure it will help me defend my thesis. NAFU is the first Russian university which I joined for a course. I'm impressed with its people and their hospitality and how things were organized. The school has been a success thanks to its top-level experts, not to underestimate also the contribution from the PhD students themselves. The diverse ideas they produced the topics they explore scientifically, the cultures and the countries they come from. This is what inspires people. It is that something that gives impetus for further progress.